TDL Kenworth T270. I guess the first thing you notice when looking at the two front hoods is, I guess, the first class look of the Kenworth grille um, compared with the, the kind of plastic uh, chrome dipped plastic grille that of the Hino. Now, as I go closer to these two, you'll see that this is actually a, an aluminum steel grille that holds up and functions. Not only does it look good with the Kenworth bug on it, but it works exceptionally well to keep debris out of your cooling system. And repair to a cooling system is somewhere in the $800 to $1,000 range. Now we step in front of the Hino, and I'm a bigger guy, but my fist almost fits through there. So you can see that to protect the cooling module is not very sufficient with the Hino. Uh, now this truck happens to be parked in the Kenworth lot because our excellent body shop worked to fix that grill that was uh, broken in an accident and the bad news for the Hino customer is it was here for three weeks waiting for this part so um, just wanted to go on with my comparison here you'll notice the cab the cab of the Hino is a cab over cab so it's got a large roped in windshield compared to the Kenworth uh, a little bit smaller windshield, not as not as much aerodynamic resistance, and not as much surface area for a rock to catch. Uh, and when I go over here to show you the profile of the two trucks, maybe I'll go this way so you can see the profile of the Hino compared to the Kenworth. You see the 20 degree slope on the Kenworth gives us greatest forward visibility in class. Now I want to show you the interior of the Kenworth before we step over to the Hino. As you get inside of this truck, you'll notice here we've got a gauge cluster that is much like a heavy duty truck. And it's actually got a functioning uh, glove box. Tilt and telescopic on the steering, and then there's very large um, pedals for the brake and accelerator. You'll notice on the dash, this is a Kenworth only. Uh, Allison push button control for the transmission so there's nothing taking up space on the floor nothing in your way um, as you'll see in the Hino it's a fully trimmed cab very quiet cab it's uh, the hallmark of the Kenworth product is the cab and I'll show you some of the construction outside I want to direct your attention to the the hinge it's a piano style hinge that will hold up, well, 15 to 20 years minimum. This is the same cab that is used in all the heavy and severe duty Kenworth applications. So um, it's a Teflon coated pin inside that uh, piano hinge. And it's so strong that, as I'll show you later in a demonstration, I can hang off this door and uh, not cause any damage or need for readjustments. Stepping back out of the Kenworth and these large self-cleaning steps, I'll point out the, the bulkhead door of the Kenworth cab is really the hallmark of the cab. You'll notice a stainless steel interior. The door shuts, the door itself is as thick as the, as the door. As you can see it's a full three inches in thickness. When you shut this you hear an airtight seal that you just don't get with any other truck. Uh, these rivets on the cab are huck bolted. This indicates the method of construction of the Kenworth cab is a huck bolted construction cab compared with all the competition which uses a stamped welding process. This process is a six times stronger process than the stamped welding. So as you can imagine, if this were to get in some kind of a, a rollover accident, the driver's safety would uh, never be in peril in this cab because the door is built into the structure. And one other point, there's no weather seal inside the door threshold. It's on, it's on the door itself, so there'll be no wear and tear from the driver's foot catching it. And these little pockets here for, for information are also you know, strong enough to be a, a step or a, a handle. Um, so very heavy duty construction. Uh, stepping over here to the Hino cab, you'll notice a lot about the Hino is very automotive. Um, Here's an automotive door if you've ever seen one. You know, the thickness of that door is not the same throughout. And the hinges, when I mentioned our piano style hinge, the hinges are these two automotive stamped hinges. 
that, believe me, as a driver leans on this door, this door will come out of adjustment and the need for um, some downtime to fix it will be happening. Uh, inside the cab, you'll see again, it's a very automotive layout. Look at the size of the foot feeds compared to the Kenworth. You know, very small in size comparatively. Um, the cab, the interior of the cab is nothing special when it comes to layout and instrumentation. You've got a whopping two clusters, two gauge clusters here. And this is the latest 2012 product Hino has to offer. Um, the interior is very plain. It is fully trimmed. However, very plain and very automobile in its um, fit and finish. And you'll notice the shifter, again, looks just like it's right out of a Tundra or something. Um, a lot of content comes standard in the Hino, but same content is standard in a Kenworth. And moving on to what's under the hood. Both products feature the same type of technology to meet emissions. It's the SCR technology, the use of diesel exhaust fluid. You'll notice the difference in the, in the hood tilts. The Hino hood tilt is not quite a 90 degree tilt, whereas the Kenworth tilt is a full 90 degree, so making serviceability very easy. One nice, real nice design feature of the Kenworth is every one of the preventative fluid checks is on the driver's side. Um, some other selling points, all of our hoses are standard straight hoses, so in case of roadside repair, easily can be fixed. And I'll show you the differences in the Hino here in a second. Now the Hino has, has most of their PM checks and fluid checks here on this side, but the uh, transmission fluid is on the other side, so you're gonna have to go to both sides to check your fluids. I want you to notice all of the custom tooling that was done on a Hino. A lot of expense, a lot of money went into that to make it proprietary. And I guarantee you, any roadside assistance guy isn't gonna have the necessary tools to get you back on the road again. They're gonna have to go to a Hino dealer. And last count I saw, there was about 170 Hino dealers and mostly only in um, major cities. Um, you'll notice these hoses like this hose here compared to the, the Kenworth, this is a, a curved hose. So it's not something that's gonna be easily made or manufactured on the roadside uh, service call. Um, I guess this will conclude my walk around. I appreciate your time today. And uh, for sure, the things that make Kenworth superior to Hino um, basically are the cab construction, the heavy duty equipment that goes into the, the uh, construction of the Kenworth. Certainly our grill is a big, big selling point. Um, but but nor, the thing you need to remember about the Kenworth medium duty is there's 2,000 parts on it. And I, oh, look at this service, look at this service thing or, or safety feature that I want, just want to point out here. It won't allow you to shut it until you do that. So you can't ever have it blow back on you. But of the 2,000 parts that are in the Kenworth, uh, only 250 of them, only 250 of them are unique to the medium duty product. So pricing, availability is all very uh, readily available and at good competitive pricing because there is such uh, economies of scale when you're using so many heavy duty parts in a, like, in a medium duty product. So thank you for staying with me here today and I hope you enjoy your uh, medium duty truck life. But if you were me, if I were you, I'd get into Kenworth because it's gonna stand up well over 10 to 15% longer, maybe even more than a Hino. Uh, Hino just doesn't have the heavy-duty heritage that Kenworth does. Thank you very much.